All right, welcome everybody to week six, day three. So, I was again playing Forgotten Faces for you guys. I've, I've listened to this album a couple times now. And uh, I was talking to, to Nate again. And he says it was uh, based on The Fall of the House of Usher. Which is a pretty cool short story by Ed Allan Poe. Okay. Um, is that even a question? <laughs> Always ready to learn computer science. All right. Good answer. So, uh, we're going to learn some fallacies today. I promised that on Wednesday. Or if you want, I could just not teach anything new and uh, just let you take the midterm. I don't know. Either way. Either way works for me. <laughs> midterm is 27 questions, uh, 27 points. Um, the truth tables, uh, each individual blank on the truth table counts as one point. And so for the, for the truth tables, um, I fill out some of it and have you fill out some of it. So, uh, talk more about the midterm. Um, better to go over the midterm more. Mm. Okay. So the midterm is going to be in the module section. Is in the module section. I have six midterm there. It starts uh, in 56 minutes. Uh, there's the window thing again. I wonder how people did on the quiz yesterday. Because the quiz was literally just asking when does the midterm open? When does the midterm close? Um, Quiz statistics there, yeah. Okay, so all y'all did fine on it. Okay, so three people said false. So those three people, um, yeah, this is the window of the test. Okay. Best, uh, best, uh, uh, correct percentage yet, I think. You're welcome. Okay, um, repeat that here. Um, I'm not gonna preview it. 20 points, there's 27 points and then one extra credit. Uh, you guys should be able to all get the extra credit, so that's kind of a free point also. Um, what do I say to myself when I play Skyrim New Vegas? What's that? Violence is always the answer to everything. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, um, it's almost multiple choice, right? There's a couple of fill in the blanks, like for the truth tables. Um, you, um, um, you know, you have a truth table. You like have to fill in the blank on it. So it'll, it'll look kind of like this, but with um, it's the way that it looks on the uh, the midterm. Is it looks like this? And then there's going to be a blank here, and you have to fill in the uh, the missing ones. Okay. So most of it's done for you, but there's a couple open blanks, and you have to type in a T for true and F for false. Should be pretty straightforward, I hope. But um, the last time I did this, I had a bunch of students put in, like, one for true, and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Just follow the pattern. The pattern is T for true, F for false. So... Uh, just, yeah, just fill in the missing elements and uh, you'll, you'll be fine. And if you need uh, more time, uh, yeah, there's two hours, two hours for, uh, for the midterm. If you need more time, just do it on Sunday and just, um, I, I went over literally when I, when I uh, made the midterm, I, I did this. I pulled up the notes that I gave you guys on, you know, Wednesday, and I just went through them. <laughs> so, uh, don't expect every one of the ethical theories and theories of truth to show up. Um, it, you know, I, I don't like it when there's like five ethical theories and there's like five questions, and so you know there's going to be one of each. So I didn't 
you know, make it quite that obvious. There'd be like four. And so, um, and then for these, uh, invalid, valid and sound, uh, just be aware that you can have invalid twice or valid twice, you know, make sure you understand these. There's like, uh, like four of these four on uh, theories of truth and like four on the ethical theories and like four on the invalid valid sound. And then there's a couple that are recognizing the difference between modus ponens, modus tollens, affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent. So there's a couple of them that are like, what kind of argument is this? Or you don't even, you don't even have to worry about if it's sound or not. You just have to pick out the structure of the argument, the form of the argument, which one, what kind of argument is it making? Which one of these four? Okay. So. Um, <laughs> look. Uh, there's only going to be V, carrot, and arrow. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, and or implication. Uh, don't forget about not. So, yeah, you need to know and or not an impl implication. Those are the four things you need to know. Okay. And don't live stream the, the taking of the midterm. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I, like I said, I just basically just went, I just went down this thing. And that's why I made the midterm. All right, so let's talk about uh, the symbol for not. I use the exclamation mark, but I, I note that on the yeah on on I I don't like the finger bang or the finger you know pistols symbol because uh, it I don't know I, I'm a computer science person. We use exclamation mark, so we shout at people when we contradict them. I guess. All right. Um, yeah, the little kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So, um, <laughs> midterm live stream party. <laughs> Please don't live stream the midterm. You kill me. All right. Um, how the hell do you get that symbol on your phone? I don't. I don't even know. Like, okay. Um, yeah. So we use exclamation mark for not. All right, so we, um, uh, one of the big, next big topics that we're going to talk about are fallacies. We, we've covered a couple fallacies already. Um, we went over um, denying the antecedent and affirming the consequent. Um, let's see. We talked about the naturalistic fallacy a little bit so I'm just gonna go over that one real fast so um, this is in, this is not on the midterm by the way it'll be on the next midterm um, the Azot problem is about the divide between the way things are and the way that they should be and Hume um, said you can't reason from the way things are to the way they should be you know directly right you can't just say well because you know fire trucks are red we should have red fire trucks you know there's, there's a missing step in there that you, you need to kind of supply. Um, and so that doesn't stop us from doing it. Of course, um, people have a implicit bias towards just keeping things the way they are because uh, change can be scary. And, and, I, and I, I, don't, I don't even mean that sarcastically. Like, you know, um, we all kind of know how taxes work in America. We all agree that they're kind of um, terrible. Right. Like the way that we do taxes in America is sort of um, ridiculous because what happens is um, <laughs> uh, what happens is don't create a group chat either for the midterm I learned. OK, so oh, I should mention for the for the midterm, it's open notes. It's open Internet. Um, you don't have to like um, you, you can open up Zy books if you want. All that's fine. It's open everything except other people. OK. So you are free to have your notes printed out next to you on the computer, open up Zybooks, all that's fine. Open up my old video streams, all that's fine. Okay. So you cannot create a group chat, anything except other people. That's all I ask for. 
Okay. Um, okay. So, um, yeah. And so even though we know that the IRS is sort of like uh, not uh, optimal, and even though we know that the way that we file taxes isn't optimal, because what happens is you submit your taxes and the IRS calculates your taxes also. Right? So you submit your taxes and then the IRS redoes them. And then if they're wrong, you get penalized. Right? One way or the other. You get penalized either by overpaying, which uh, they get the money, or you are very much penalized if you underpay. Right? And if you uh, maybe do it too much, then you get to go to jail or get big fines and things like that. So... Yeah, it's, it's just a ridiculously um, dumb system. Like, we could just be like, hey, IRS, how much do I owe? Because they're doing the calculation anyway, right? Like, you know, you've got my W-2, right? Because employers digitally send in the W-2 forms to the IRS, right? So they already have all of your income data from that. They're missing some data, maybe, um, and that's one of the reasons why you file your, your income taxes. But, like... You know, for like all the big basic stuff, like your um, mortgage um, payments, all that stuff, they already have on file. And so it would be really neat if you just be like, hey, tell me how much I owe and I'll just write you a check. Or even better, don't make me write a check. Let me just go to a website. I'll type in my social security. You say you owe 500 bucks or you're going to get 500 bucks back or something like that. And I can just give you my credit card and then we're done and I don't have to file anything. You know, just let me look at, you know, just let me look it over and make sure nothing's missing, you know, or, you know, the, the numbers are correct, you know. Nope. <laughs> nope. Why? Well, because we know how the current system works. You know, well, there's two reasons. One, uh, the TurboTax people lobbied the IRS to not allow the IRS to do that. That's that's actually a true story. It sounds like a conspiracy theory, right? Um, it's not, as far as I can tell. So, uh, and then, then, but a big part of it is just like, we all know how the IRS works and change is scary because, you know, there's always the possibility that, you know, what, what you get next is worse. <laughs> right. So, um, <laughs> okay. Um, so the status quo bias, uh, naturalistic fallacy, the way things are, are the way they should be. So a fallacy, a fallacy is when an argument um, doesn't work. Okay. So we've talked about invalid, valid, and sound. A invalid argument is a fallacious argument. It's almost a synonym for describing it. Okay. By the way, we're getting a quiz of this lecture, just the midterm. Um, I don't know. I guess we can do a quiz too if you. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. We learn how to get ahead of taxes today. Yeah, don't work. <laughs> one one simple hack that the IRS hates. You don't want to pay any taxes. Just don't work. There you go. Don't have any money. Don't have any assets. <laughs> um. Yeah. So a logical fallacy is one where just the logic doesn't work. Now, it, it's possible that the, the argument might not even be wrong, necessarily, right? Like, on some of the quiz questions in the past, we've had things where, like, the premises are true and the conclusion is true. Like, um, Peter Jackson directed The Lord of the Rings, Gollum uh, and uh, Circus was in um, Lord of the Rings, therefore Circus was King Kong in... Uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong movie. The premises were true. The conclusion was true. But it was still an invalid argument. And this is something that will... One of the questions on the... Uh, midterm is like this. Where it's not even wrong. It's not even wrong. Everything's right. And it's still an invalid argument. Okay? Because the logic does not work. Uh, to ever reminded Kearney about the uh, quiz, it was... Uh, Sebastian. So Sebastian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> under the bus. Just tossed him. Tossed him right under the bus. Just like that. 
That'll, that'll be the quiz question. What student, uh, what student asked about a quiz today? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, that's a good question. Okay. So, um, yeah. So basically a fallacy is when the argument is working. Now, there's also these things called cognitive biases. And a uh, cognitive bias is a, um, what's the, what's the nice way of putting it? Your brain takes shortcuts. Okay. That's, that's maybe the nice way of putting it. And sometimes, um, the shortcuts, um, are wrong. There, that's the nicest way of putting it. Um, the, uh, unnice way of putting a cognitive bias is that um, people have very unhealthy habits of mind um, and they can lead to disorderly thinking. And when your thoughts don't match reality, then you tend to have um, bad outcomes in life. Okay. If you guys have ever played a video game called Persona 5 or Persona 5 Royal Edition, um, it, it, the, the premise of the game is that people... Some people's thoughts are so disorderly, so, uh, not even, disorderly is not even the right word, so um, detached from reality, so twisted and distorted, that they actually create uh, these mind palaces in the sort of metaphysical plane. And, um, and it's the job of the Phantom Thieves to go into this sort of metaphysical world and perceive the distorted reality of uh, various uh, people, the... The first uh, villain is um, a basketball coach or something like that who's uh, sort of abusing the students at the school. The next one's an artist who abuses um, the apprentice artist working for him, things like that. And uh, they, you know, you go in there, you see how they have this distorted view of reality that doesn't match reality. And that's kind of a, um, that's sort of a, um, you know, sort of an, uh, it's basically what a cognitive bias is, you know, but sometimes it can be very mild and sometimes it could be like way like off, you know, the rails, right? Um, Persona 5 was on sale for a while. Yeah, I bought I bought Royal Edition at, at full price because I was like, yeah, let's do this. And then I was like, wait, do I really want to play through this game again? No, not really. <laughs> I haven't even launched it yet. So, um, <laughs> this coach should have been fired. Yeah, no, it, as long as you're winning, you know, like. <laughs> Three thousand dollars was the worst buy. Yeah. Yeah, three thousand dollars for a box of air. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna be spending a lot of time on these on these topics. Alright. So we're gonna go through the most common fallacies and uh, give examples of them, talk about why they're wrong, and give examples of even when sometimes they're right, okay? Um, a lot of times our English brain will like hide the fact they're a fallacy because the way that we talk, a lot of people just use fallacies in common everyday life. Okay, so let's get going. So uh, the first one is called ad populum, and this is one that a student mentioned uh, earlier um when you're we talking about consensus theory of truth right consensus theory of truth says that what people agree is true is true and that's literally the ad populum fallacy right but for a person whose consensus theory says no that actually is it's not a fallacy right if everybody agrees that gillette is the best brand of razor or whatever it's the best brand of razor you know so, um, yeah, yeah. Um, such a funny uh, character, uh, was a questionable game given by friends anime. Yeah. Doki Doki Literature Club. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what a nice, wholesome game Doki Doki Literature Club is. Okay. So, um, 
Everybody agrees that Doki Doki Literature Club is a nice, wholesome game. Therefore, it is true that Doki Doki Literature Club is a nice, wholesome video game. Okay. Um, all right. So the reason why this is a fallacy is just because people say something's true doesn't make it true. Right? Unless you're consistent. Unless it's, you believe in consensus theory. Um, you know, back in the day, slavery was widespread around the globe. And, uh, you know, everybody said slavery was, you know, well, not everybody, but like, you know, the majority of people were apparently fine with slavery existing, except presumably the slaves, right? Pro probably didn't enjoy it uh, too much. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of people would argue that despite everybody agreeing that we should have slavery, it was still wrong. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, despite people in, you know, Nazi Germany, you know, voting Hitler into power and all this stuff still was wrong, right? Um, if everybody in America believes the Grand Canyon is in Maine, they're just wrong. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care if a million Americans think that the Grand Canyon is in Maine. They're just wrong. Yeah, you know, it's just uh, it's just a simple fact. Um, the Grand Canyon's in Arizona and then parts of other states as well. Uh, Nevada and kind of goes up for a while. Um, so, um, it's pretty wholesome. You guys are horrible. <laughs> People are going to go into it like, uh, so for those of you that don't know, Doki, Do I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it. Don't worry. But like, um, I, I, I do want to put a disclaimer on that. So, um, Doki Doki Literature Club looks like um, like one of those visual novel dating you know kinds of games. It's cheerful and stuff like that, and it is at the beginning, and then um, it is not by the end. Okay, so just you know, for those of you that are like, oh, what are they talking about? Yeah, I'm just gonna tell you it's, it starts off with one tone, and then the tone of the game changes. Okay. Uh, Doki Doki is the sound of your heart beating. It's so cute. Okay. All right. So uh, ad populum is used a lot in what area? So there is one industry that loves the ad populum fallacy. Can anyone think about it? Politics? Hmm. Yeah, it is popular in politics, but uh, that wasn't the industry that I was I was thinking of. Politics, by the way, will be an answer for a lot of these <laughs> fallacies because uh, politicians love fallacies. You know, everybody loves me. Everybody knows it's true. Everybody says I am the best president ever. Right? Advertising, very good, very, very, very good. Yeah. Uh, Buy the Ford F-150, America's most loved car. The most popular fries in America are at McDonald's, right? Like, they'll put this up on the, you know, uh, up on the, uh, the the little signs, you know. Um, America's, America's best-selling fries, you know. And, uh... Deep fried Twinkies, not what I, not what I expected when I searched for this. Um, so, yeah, here you go. These Oreida fries are America's best sellers. It's a matter of taste, as millions have discovered. Right, it's it's ad po You know what I mean? Like, it's ad populum. It's an it's an appeal to the group. It's an appeal to popularity, right? And so you should buy, you should buy these fries because they're popular and it, and it works. It works. Like that's why advertisers do it. It works. Um, 20 different movies are the number one America, number one movie in America. Yeah. Um, yeah. Four to five dentists recommend a brand of toothpaste, right? Um, I, I would love to see that survey. Call up a dentist. Yeah. Hey, uh, would you tell your uh, 
customers to use uh, Colgate toothpaste. Do you think Colgate toothpaste works? Yeah, sure, I guess. Okay, cool, thank you. <laughs> you know, like, who's the one dentist that says not to use toothpaste? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, usually the way the things are worded, it's like, if you just think that everybody should use toothpaste, which most dentists hopefully think, like, I don't know, YouTube surveys, yeah. Um, what if they're telling the truth? Well, it, they are. Like, a lot of times they are. Like, um, um, the most popular truck in America, um, and there's different ways you can uh, measure that. Um is here and um, and you can view it by state you know Ford F-150 right so um, it's it's a very popular thing in advertising and the reason for that is because as humans we engage in something called social proof so if everybody like loves eating um, some food Right. Maybe you've never heard of it. Um, here in Fresno, when I when I moved here, people are like, oh, uh, everybody here loves beer rocks. And I'm like, what's a beer rock? Like, oh, you've never had beer rocks. You have to try beer rocks, you know. And um, it's uh, and, and that's, you know, we're like, OK, well, I mean, if if everybody else likes it, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot. You know what I mean? And so that's just part of uh, human nature, you know, is like, all right. Uh, everyone's kind of, um, every, if everyone's doing something, it, it must be right. Especially when you don't know any better. Like if you're a truck person, you know, I'd be like, oh, F-150s are terrible. You know, no, you need to get the Tundra or whatever, you know? Um, but like, if you, if you're not really like, if you don't really know that much about trucks, it's a pretty safe bet to go with the number one truck in America. You know what I'm saying? Cause if it was that terrible, like people wouldn't be buying it. Right. So, um, um, <laughs> dentist sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. That's funny. Um, it's like, uh, I, I've told this story before. Once I was going to a concert and it was at like a, um, like an arena kind of, kind of thing that had different entrances kind of around the, the place. And when I rolled up, the entrance was closed. And so I was like, all right, well, it has to be one of the other entrances in this big, building and I come up and um all the people coming to the concert also were all going this way I'm like okay well they clearly know where the entrance is so I follow them and we kind of like walk around the building and we come to a dead end and everyone's just sort of milling there and I'm like is this the entrance to the concert and they're like I don't know I thought you knew I'm like I didn't know I was just following you know somebody else and and what probably happened was like one person was like, um, right or left, uh, I guess we'll go right, you know, and ended up in a dead end and just, you know, a big crowd of people all, he looked very confident, you know, I don't know how to tell you, you know, and we all just sort of followed along and we're all just like, oh, well, he, he's striding along. I know where the entrance is. He didn't say that, but it sure looks like it did. And we all just kind of went this way and just piled into a dead end together and everyone's very awkward and looking at each other. So... Um, yeah, so that would be, you know, that would be the, the downside to social proof. Anyway, so ad populum is a fallacy just because people say something's true doesn't make it true. Okay. Um, there you go. Uh, never ignores me at the power of stupid people in large groups. All right. But, um, here's an exception to it, right? So what if like a million people all witnessed an event? You know, let's say that an, a UFO came down and a million people saw it. Would that be more reliable than if one person saw it? You know? What if every person in America uh, saw an alien last night, but you missed it because you went to bed earlier or something, right? I'm not saying it had to happen. It's just like, of like literally every person in America is awake saw something like we would, we would tend to believe it. Right. Like, you know, maybe some of you guys are too young to remember nine 11, but 
everybody in my generation remembers 9-11. You know, so you'd be pretty sure that 9-11 happened, right? So, um, like skipping school for one day and then 10 fights broke out. And then you come back and everyone's like, oh man, you should have seen the fights. Yeah, and so like there, there are times where like when people are like sort of all agreeing on something. And, you know, like I said, with social proof, a lot of times like it substitutes... A lot of times social proof substitutes for your own experience, right? Like if you know um, all about computers, you know, you know what to buy. But if you don't, then a lot of times people are like, all right, what's the most popular gaming monitor? And you just buy that one because you assume it can't be too bad. Okay. Um, only one person saw 9-11, yeah. Yeah, uh, there was a there was this nine eleven truther guy at my college, and he was famous for like coming into people's classrooms with like a bullhorn, and um, like nine eleven was an inside job. George W. Bush knew about it. Da, 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 da. And he'd like march around the, the big lecture halls that we were in and stuff like that, and police would chase him out and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Not, not my, not my favorite dude. Like, man, I'm just trying to learn some computer science here. You're all up in my grill with a bullhorn. Yeah. Ugh. So, um, yeah. All right. So, uh, then the controversy to this is, um, uh, it feasibly all could be a prank. Like what if everybody, what if everybody in America got together and decided to prank you about the existence of aliens, right? So, um, so this video here is, I'm not, I'm not going to play it for y'all. I'll link it on uh, the discord channel, but the notion is, um, good luck finding GPU. Yeah. Uh, they, they do post on the general chat channel where the, uh, uh drops are coming here in town at Best Buy and stuff. Um, it's just a prank. Yeah. And so, uh, these, these two guys were pranking each other over the years and, um, and so one of the guys got everybody in this crowd of this big basketball game to um, to cheer. So the, the the guy being pranked puts a blindfold on, takes a half court shot to win a million dollars, right? And uh, and so the other guy gets the crowd like just no matter how if he makes it or not it doesn't matter. Just applaud. We're gonna put up a sign saying you won, and we're gonna bring out a check. So just go with it, okay? This is part of our big prank war thing. And, and they agree, you know, and so the guy comes out, they blindfold him, he makes the shot, totally airballs it, just totally whiffs it, and then everyone's like, yeah, and he, he takes off his, his, uh, thing, and, and, uh, he, he, like, collapses to the ground, he's like, yes, I, I just made a million dollars, and everyone's jumping up and down, and, and they bring out this giant check with, like, a million dollars in it, and the guy's, like, about ready to cry, he's so happy, and then, the, then when the guy with the check puts it down, it's his friend that's been pranking him, and he immediately knows, um, it's all a, a lie. It's all a lie. And you can just see at that moment a person die on the inside. You know? So it's kind of sad, actually. So don't watch it. <laughs> um, it's it's funny and sad at the same time. But yeah, so in, in theory, you know, it could all be a prank, too. So, you know. Best Buy a new inventory today, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you were there since 1 in the morning? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just signed up for the EVGA, uh, queue and waited six months and then they sent me a, a new graphics card. So, all right. Um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay. So let's talk about ad vericundium, which is uh, more commonly known as argument from authority. So, um, yeah, yeah. Every every time new GPs come in, it's it's like Black Friday. It's ridiculous. Um, argument from, from authority says because an authority told me something is true, it must be true, right? The Pope says God is real. I trust the Pope. Therefore, God is real, right? Um, the president said that so and so is a bad person. Therefore, so and so is a bad person. Um, you know, and maybe maybe these are even like somewhat acceptable, a little bit. 
because like if I'm if I'm talking to like um, a marine biologist, right? I don't know anything about marine biology. I know what a dolphin is. I know what a I know what a sea star is, and not to call it a starfish. Like I know that much. I've been to the Monterey Aquarium a couple times, but I am not a marine biologist. You know what I'm saying? And so if a marine biologist comes up to me and says like, "Yo," you know. Let me drop some facts on you about kelp forests. I'd be like, all right, cool. I believe you, right? Because you're a, you got a doctorate in marine biology. I, I don't, you know, you know, I, I had a brief conversation with the guy that runs Shark Lab at CSU Long Beach, right? At a, at a conference as a, you know, I'm like, all right, I believe you. You know, you're, it doesn't seem like you're, you're BSing me. Uh, you seem like an up and up dude. You know your stuff. I will just believe everything you want to tell me on uh, sharks, you know, especially his, his field. And so, um, yeah, I've, I've got a laptop with a 3060 in it too. It was, it was like less than a thousand bucks for a, like a 140 hertz monitor or 200 hertz monitor or something like that. And um, a 3060. So uh, did you know that sharks eat their siblings? See, I don't know if I should trust you or not. So anyway, so a lot of times um, we, we will sort of allow that because if you don't allow experts to be experts in the fields that they're experts at, um, you know, you're gonna have a trouble, you're gonna have trouble in life. You know what I mean? Cause like, if you're like, you're gonna need to prove it to me, man, that sharks go off offshore at nighttime or whatever. Um, you're now, you're gonna have trouble, right? Cause you know, you don't have time to do the research yourself, right? Like if you don't believe anything in your textbook, cause that's a textbook is an authority, right? I've got a textbook over here that says, um, I don't know, stuff, right? If I don't believe it, because that's an appeal to authority, then you're not going to get very far in life, right? So a lot of times we really care about appeal to improper authority, okay? So, um, geez, that's brutal. Um, source, trust me, bro. Yeah, so like when, when, you're, when you're like a crazy relative is like, uh, talking conspiracy theories, you know, and things like that, um, that would be, and, and you believe them, that would be an appeal to improper authority, right? Like, uh, my favorite, uh, conspiracy theory is that the vaccines have microchips in them. And I know computer science pretty well, and I know how small computer chips can be and what kind of power supply they require. There's absolutely no way that you can have an invisible computer chip injected into your muscle and not feel it, A, for one thing, and B, have it powered off of your body somehow, and have a, like, like, well, how do you know the government doesn't have secret technology? Because they don't. They don't. <laughs> there are two companies in the world right now that can make chips, and I know what the smallest chip can be. Like, it's literally impossible for there to be a microchip in the vaccines. You would see it, because it would it would be, like, let me, let me show you how big it is. It's that, that's, that's how big it is. You would, you would see that floating in the vaccine. They're not transparent either. There's no such thing as an invisible microscope. Like, you know. It, but people will watch a video and, and they're like, oh, they're putting, uh, uh, you know, they're putting microchips into your to your vaccines and so they can track you, you know. And and then if you, people believe that, then that is a appeal to improper authority, right? Um by the way, they don't need invisible chips that don't exist to track you. You've got a cell phone, <laughs> right? Right now, the U.S. government could find out my location and drone strike me if they want it. Yep. Um, <laughs> they, there's absolutely no need to put invisible microchips into people when everybody carries a cell phone. Okay. Uh, even though my screen is off, it is still report. Okay, thank you for turning on the screen. Uh, even though my screen is off, it is still reporting my location. Um, the cell phone companies can triangulate the signal, even if I have GPS turned off. Uh, the cell phone companies can still triangulate my signal and know where I am within a fairly, you know, 10 meters or so, something like that. So there's absolutely no reason for that. But even still, people will watch like a YouTube video and it's like, oh, they're putting invisible microchips, you know, into the vaccines. And if you believe that, you know, that's an appeal to improper authority. Whereas if you believe me, uh, like a, they don't need to do that. And B, the technology literally doesn't exist. 
I, I know the current state of the art for technology, what TSMC is doing, what Intel is doing. Those are the only two companies that are at the cutting edge right now. And TSMC is really kind of the only company because they're kind of kicking Intel's ass. And I know how small they can make a chip and it's not possible for them to make an invisible grain of sand sized CPU that runs off the human body. Like it just doesn't exist. Okay. So, um, <laughs> you saw the video where hippo was chasing a speedboat. Yeah. Um, Kearney, my shirt is pink. Well, I guess it is now. Yeah, I know. Right. But I mean, there's, there's, and that's, and that's part of it. It's like, you know, even, even what I say, take with a grain of salt, right? It's like, if I tell you that, uh, this is a pink shirt, you know, you can see it with your own eyes. Okay. So appeal to improper authority is kind of the better way of, of doing ad vericundium because we, we do appeal to uh, experts and authorities all the time, right? It doesn't make it true, but at the same time, like you don't have the time to verify literally everything in the world. Okay. So ad vericundium would be uh, like this. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. That's an actual ad, by the way. Uh, according to repeated nationwide surveys, and this is actually, uh, this is actually not probably a fallacy. Uh, this is that, you know, in and of itself, this is not a fallacy, you know, because it's probably factually true that they did a survey and more doctors smoked camels than any other cigarette. Probably factually true. But the implication of it, and you can't ignore the obvious implication because this is an advertisement. What are they trying to advertise? Right. Why was it allowed to be an ad? Because we allowed ads for uh, cigarettes and beer and, and things like that back in the day. And, um, we banned, I uh, used to have cigarettes and vending machines. Like that was the thing. Like when I was a kid, uh, you could go up and put a, put a dollar in, and get a pack of camels or whatever, you know? Um, and so, uh, cigarette advertising was banned on television. Um, beer, like, like, like magazines and like television have had like different rules for them and things like that. So, um, yeah, so what the implication is here is that the cigarettes are healthy, right? Or you should smoke, you should smoke camels because, uh, doctors are implicitly recommending them by all smoking them, right? It's kind of an ad populum too, but these are experts. And so the doctors who are experts on your health are smoking camels. So you should smoke camels because, um, Doctors in every branch of medicine were asked, what cigarettes do you smoke? You'll something camels for some, 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 some. Um, probably, you know, the advertising probably talks about like the filter pack on it or something and talking about the health benefits of camels versus other cigarettes. And so it's an appeal to improper authority. Doctors, um, who <laughs> probably should know better are implicitly recommending camel cigarettes for your health, presumably, right? So. There is an ad called Depression Stick to Encourage Depression. I mean, that might be uh, a true thing. I don't know. In martial arts, uh, there's this thing called the Encouragement Stick. <laughs> I had this old Korean dude who taught uh, Taekwondo, and he used the Encouragement Stick, stick sometimes. He was a really funny guy, too. So you just walk around the Encouragement Stick. Let me tell you, if, you're, if your stance was sloppy... He just, he would just come by like this and you just go whoop, you know, whoop, you know, knees, whoop. And he'd just be like, he'd just come up to you like this. Smile. And then you go on to the next person. Their stance would get really good. And he, 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 wouldn't, he wouldn't like beat us with it. Although, you know, uh, he would just kind of like tap the back of your leg. Like, nope, nope, nope. Bend the knee more, bend the knee more. Yeah. Um... So, um, uh, that's why we need more critical thinkers. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so scientists have said the Higgs boson exists. Uh, they've published papers on it. They're 99.9999 certain that the Higgs boson exists, but does that make the boson actually exist? No, we, we could be wrong, but here's the thing. Like you need to decide 
if the Higgs boson exists or not, you know? And, you know, if you, somebody held a gun to my head and said, bet, you know, whether or not the Higgs boson exists, I'd be like, yeah, I, I would say it exists. Why? Because they've done a lot of research on it. Uh, I know some of the people at CERN, you know, they're, they're on the up and up. I don't see any reason for them to lie about this. They're 99.99999 certain, like, I'm confident saying it exists, right? And so, they're, you know, to make science work and things like that, like, sometimes appealing to authority is fine. It doesn't make it true, but appealing to it gives you um, justification for you believing it. Let's put it that way. So there's the truth, which might be totally inaccessible. We might not ever know if it actually exists or not. But you have to have a belief about the truth, and you want your belief to match the truth. And so are you going to choose to believe something that's 99.9999999% true or are you going to believe the opposite? You know, it, a reasonable person would believe the experts in the field. Okay. So when, when experts have gone through peer review and ideally the paper's been replicated and ideally there's been a meta review from all the different people doing all the different sources in different ways, at that point you're kind of justified in believing it, right? So doesn't make it true, it'd still be wrong, but um, uh, you're justified in believing something when it's gone through the scientific process. Okay. Um, so, do you guys understand the difference between like your, uh, your uncle drinking too much at Thanksgiving and telling you that vaccines contain microchips and like, you know, um, you know, CERN publishing the results of years of research on the Higgs boson. Like, do you guys see why one's an appeal to improper authority and the other one is, yeah, technically it's an appeal to authority fallacy, but you're still probably justified believing them. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so that's it for today. We've got more. Um, yeah, you don't have a linear cell here in your backyard, presumably. Right. So, yeah, in, in science, you know, we don't we don't pay attention to authority too much. Like we do rerun experiments and things like that. And there's always a chance the science is wrong. But at the same time, like if somebody has to hold a gun to your head, you're like you want to take the bet, presumably that is ninety nine point nine 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 percent going to be right versus, um, you know, your uncle at Thanksgiving. So, all right, uh, yep. <laughs> that's it. So 10 minutes from now, uh, midterm opens. Um, you don't have to take it immediately. Um, just don't forget. Because I'm, I'm, I'm fairly nice and reasonable and, um, you know, on, on most matters. But if you forget to take the midterm, I cannot help you. You're just going to, you're just going to suck that zero down. So, um, it's only 10% of your grade. It's not the end of the world, but, um, is today's lesson on the midterm now? Hmm. Uh, well, the earlier part, I guess, when I was talking about the midterm. But the, the fallacies are not. Okay. Uh, Walkerbot hasn't gotten your attendance. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll look into it. All right. See everybody on Monday. Have fun on the midterm, and we will review the midterm then. Peace out.